Hello and welcome friends to another episode of the series of fountain pens from the my school uh, years and um, and other Chinese fountain pens. I I keep all my Chinese fountain pens, vintage fountain pens from this period in this uh, box. Today we will talk about a special fountain pen and uh, why is it special because it is an um, NOS fountain pen from the 1980s I uh, found it in a drawer like this you can see it, there is a mark here but um, certainly the box was used but the pen it is um, in its original packaging as you can uh, see it's a plain box let's uh, look at the box so um, we have uh, 400 the name of the model the producer or the brand, the sub-brand, Youth Fountain Pen with Iridium Tip Nib. Fountain Pen with Iridium Tip Nib. No markings here. Some uh, Arabic characters for the Middle East uh, countries. They uh, exported this uh, model in the 1980s and it was quite an affordable fountain pen let's um, bring it out okay youth fountain pen with iridium tipped nib and some uh, chinese characters here we'll leave the packaging and the box here and now we will admire the beautiful beautiful cap of this fountain pen you can see that it is an nos cap because it is in immaculate shape no wearing of the plating uh, sincerely, I don't know if this is a gold plating, but it sure looks like um, a gold uh, plating. No um, imprints on the clip, just at the end of the cap, we, ha we can see youth. The clip is uh, interesting is not a plain clip you can see that it has a, like a canal in the middle of it let's see how springy it is mm. not uh, springy but uh, i think it does uh, the job the cap ends in this uh, conical shape and um, the end of the barrel you can see it has um, a little hole at the end we will see if um, it uh, reaches uh, the other side when uh, I will um, screw the barrel the cap uh, is uh, let me focus the cap is friction fit so it reveals this interesting interesting um, silver ring it's quite a thick ring i want to show you that um, this ring has some um, some ink windows interesting interesting design of course all the shape of this fountain pens reminds us of the Parker 51 model 
but this has some interesting interesting uh, feels to it you can see that on the end of the grip we have like an arrow yes you can see that we have those indentations in the plastic mold and it looks like an arrow or the point of the arrow and i mean the end of the gripping section yes beautiful uh, uh, and it gives a dynamic flow to the whole uh, fountain pen at the end we have the ebonite feed a small feed similar to the parker 51 this is the nib of course it's a steel nib with an iridium point and maybe gold uh, plated the barrel and screws the barrel and screws and we can see the aromatic type filling system on the protective metal uh, part it is imprinted youth yes you can see youth and also on the lever bar also youth um, I promised you that um, I will look at the end of the barrel and uh, let's see yes this is um, you can see at the end of it it is a little hole I don't know what purpose it has maybe it has it is a design production feature or maybe it has a functioning role for um, uh, the the airflow inside the fountain pen also um, this part unscrews because I want to show you all of it and um, it reveals this transparent section you can see it is beautiful beautiful in a beautiful shape no visible imprints on the nib but i'm sure it is a steel nib also this metallic part you can remove it and it reveals the sack and uh, you can see inside the tube a small tube like you see also on the original Parker 51 and um, speaking about the Parker 51 I have uh, an example from the beginning of the 50s and um, we will look at both of them side by side you can see that um, I don't know if it shows on camera but this is a la uh, larger um, fountain pen it's quite uh, big and uh, it also is more uh, thick this is a slim one this is a thick one the caps are friction fit but let's uh, focus on uh, them okay so you can see the similar shape but um, indeed um, the the quality of the parker is uh, superior to the chinese let's say uh, copy it's not uh, a copy but it uh, has lots of uh, elements borrowed for from the parker 51 it also unscrews but um, you can um, almost feel the 
quality of um, the plastic. And uh, I've noticed that um, also the Parker has a hole at the end of the barrel. I didn't notice it before. You learn some new things every day. Of course, this is um, the Parker 51 bar. You can see it ends in this uh, plastic uh, part. And um, it certainly, I uh, can't pull it off. This is the Parker 51. And I think it was um, interesting to show you guys the small comparison between it and uh, this uh, Chinese fountain pen. The barrel also has an interesting, um, the end of the barrel has an interesting, interesting um, element. And let's focus on it. You can see it has this um, like uh, uh, rays of sun and um, they they end um, this uh, beautiful barrel. Uh, they have a purely design role or an aesthetic role. <laughs> but I find them interesting. <laughs> okay. Let us move on to the side-by-side -side comparisons. This is the Youth 400 from the 1980s. This is a Parker 51 for, from the beginning of the 1950s. I have also a vintage Lamy 2000 from um, 1969. And um, Pelican M800 Sauvron from 1987. So these are the fountain pens. I will leave the measurements of the Youth 400 on the screen. And next we will have the writing sample. Bear in mind that this is an NOS model and this will be the first time that it will be inked, just for you guys. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> fingers crossed and let's see how it writes. Okay, we put this side by And this is the writing sample. I love my Parker Queen King, so <laughs> it will have the honor to test this fountain pen. The truth is, I don't own uh, much fountain pen inks, so I have the Pelican 4001 and this uh, ink bottle. Only three ink bottles and so many fountain pens. I believe it's um, a lack of uh, imagination, but... Uh, it is what it is. I prefer to invest my money in buying new and new old fountain pens and uh, I neglect the beautiful ink uh, bottles that are out there. Okay, for the first time, let's see. Hmm. Yes, you can see the bubbles and you can hear them also. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can see that uh, the ink uh, has entered the sack. Okay. I'm sorry guys, it's uh, raining outside. If you hear some strange noises, it's from the drops of rain outside. And I'm so excited 
the first time okay this is a youth 400 sorry sorry I believe I didn't yes I didn't close the bar uh, let's uh, focus a bit a bit <laughs> you can see that um, this is a nice design element but <laughs> when you ink it uh, it tends to hold some ink in those um, you now see it yes it holds some ink um, so <laughs> trying to clean it thoroughly and it still remains a little bit of ink okay uh, we will return to the writing sample so we have a youth 400 this is a made in China made in China it was made in the 1980s and um, believe me it writes beautifully at first I had the impression that uh, it's uh, scratched when I uh, first um, wrote this uh, youth uh, war but uh, no Whoa, unbelievable if of course it's a hooded nib so I wouldn't decide to have uh, much line variation and indeed it has no line variation from how it writes I believe this is an F model let's see F4 fine fine nib um, I don't have any problems with it I um, I simply love it it certainly has some um, a nice nice nib this was my review of this little green fountain pen it is a beautiful beautiful green fountain pen a vintage fountain pen from china made in a time that they were trying to enter the western markets and uh, deliver quite quite a nice product at an unbeatable price the these were un unbelievable cheap fountain pens but look at um, the writing so it is uh, beautiful <laughs> beautiful and i don't like uh, particularly the aromatic or the sack fountain pens but um, i have to say that this is a nice fountain pen i hope you've enjoyed my review as always i wish you to have a nice day and uh, see you soon at another episode of Chinese fountain pens from my school days. Bye bye.